In this section, I'm going to talk about how a microscope works. So there's three main properties of an effective microscope, magnification, resolution, and contrast. The ocular and objective lenses are combined to determine magnification. So the ocular lens is the lens that's closest to the eye, also known as the eyepiece, and this forms the virtual image that's received by the eye and converted into a retinal or visual image. The objective lens is the lens closest to the specimen, and that forms the real image. So ocular lens is up here, objective lens is down here. In order to visualize a specimen in a light microscope, light originates in the base, it travels through the condenser lens where it is focused on the specimen. Then it travels through the specimen into the objective lens where it is magnified. Then it travels through the ocular lens where it's magnified again and then into the eye where it's processed as a visual stimulus. So pathway of light is going to be an important part of um, you know, the upcoming test, so make sure you understand this pathway of light. You can go ahead and rewind and play it again if you'd like. So pathway of light to the eye. Magnifying power of the microscope, or total magnification, is calculated by multiplying the magnification of the ocular lens times the objective lens. The ocular lens in a standard light microscope is usually 10 times. So 10 times 10x is the ocular lens. And then we have the objectives. And the objectives are usually 4, 10, 40, and 100. Here it depicts 10, 40, and 200. So I'm just going to start writing down some of these numbers. So the ocular is typically 10. The objectives include 4, 10, 40, and 100. Now in order to get total magnification, you would have to multiply the ocular time the, times the objective. So if we use the 4x objective to get to total magnification, we would have to multiply it by the 10x ocular, and total magnification would be 40 times for the 4x objective lens. If we want to calculate total magnification of the 40x objective, we would do 40 times 10 to give us 400 times. Resolution is the capacity of an optical system to distinguish or separate two adjacent objects or points from one another. Microorganisms cannot be resolved by the naked eye. So microorganisms are so small that we can't distinguish them or separate them. So if there were two cells right next to each other, we wouldn't be able to tell that it's two cells. We would need a apparatus with a higher resolving power than what our eye would have. The resolving power is determined by a combination of the characteristics of the objective lens and the wavelength of light being used to illuminate the sample. Optical microscopes use visible light. So on the spectrum of light, optical light uh, microscopes use visible light. So the effect of wavelength on resolution, so if it's a low resolution microscope, it would look pretty foggy. It would be difficult to distinguish two points from one another, and you can see how the light surrounds the object. It's very unclear. A high resolution microscope would be able to distinguish two points that are very close together. So here you can see it's much more clear in high resolution. So the appearance of a small bacterial cell in a microscope looks like it's really one cell, but it actually is two cells. As far as a eukaryotic cells go, cell goes, it looks kind of um, fuzzy on the inside, but in reality it's supposed to have visible ribosomes. So resolution allows us to distinguish two different points, and it allows us to make determinations on whether an organism is actually two separate organisms or one uh, larger organism, and it allows us to see more intricate details of the organisms that we're looking at through the microscope. Oil immersion. 
So a drop of oil must be placed on the slide when using oil immersion, the oil immersion objective lens. Oil has the same optical qualities of glass. It prevents the scattering of light rays and increases the numerical aperture and resolution. Oil immersion can resolve objects that are 0.2 micrometers apart. So adding oil and using the 100x objective allows us to have a higher resolving power. So this is a diagram of what it looks like when you add oil to the slide. So this is the microscope slide here, and this is the 100x objective with the objective lens within that objective. If we do not add oil, what happens is when light comes up from the light source through the condenser lens, some of the light rays go into the objective and other ones are bending away, and that's called refraction. So light naturally just refracts. It bends and it scatters in all different ways. If we add a drop of oil, though, oil is a different medium for that light to pass through. And because it passes through oil at a slower rate than it passes through air, it actually bends those light rays up into the objective lens. If you try to focus a microscope using the 100x objective, you will not be able to focus that unless you have oil, because the oil forces these light waves to bend up into the objective lens. Without oil, it would, the light would scatter and you wouldn't be able to accurately see the object. Contrast. So the de degree of contrast between a magnified image and its surroundings is a measured by the quality called the refractive index. It refers to the degree of bending that light undergoes as it passes from one medium to another. The higher the refractive index, the greater the contrast. In this course, we're not going to focus too much on refractive index, so you don't have to worry too much about this. But contrast in general, if you think about what contrast is, it's the ability to distinguish between two different colors or two different shapes or two different things. So the degree of contrast is measured by the quality of the refractive index. Okay, so now I'm going to go through a few examples of different types of microscopes. So bright field microscopy. In bright field microscopy, the field or the background is brighter than the organism. So here's a picture of bright field microscopy and you can see the background is brighter in um, light than the actual organism. The organism appears darker. In dark field, it's the opposite. In dark field, the background is dark and the organism is lighter. In phase contrast, different colors of light and different lights are used in order to cause the more dense items to appear darker in color. Differential interference microscopy uses a prism of light, um, two prisms that add contrasting colors to the image, and this allows us to see a 3D image where closer objects are going to be in focus and farther objects are going to be out of focus. So the image ends up being colorful and three-dimensional. Fluorescence microscopy uses UV radiation instead of uh, bright light or um, ambient light as our light source. So instead of using visible light, it uses UV radiation. Usually substances are labeled, meaning that um, antibi antibodies are substances proteins that can recognize specific substances on cells and stick to them. And those antibodies are bound to uh, light uh, sources. So when they stick to the substance, they can be illuminated by the UV radiation. Confocal microscopy uses a laser beam of light to scan various depths in the specimen. And this allows us to see really great um, images at different depths. And then the electron microscopy uses electron, uh, a wave or a beam of electrons in order to visualize organisms. Electron microscopy is necessary to visualize viruses and organisms uh, that are smaller.